Again, each, each of our Lenten Masses uh, is very special, for it has a, a different message. And most of the time, the uh, Gospels and Epistles are only read about once during the whole year. But today's Gospel we've read a few times, Sundays and other days. Our Lord is waiting for His apostles who are out on the water on their boat. Before I get to that, I think the theme of today's Mass is found also at the very end of the Gospel. It says that our Lord is going from village to village and from town to town, healing people. And as many people as came to our Lord and only touched His garments, they were healed. Well, that's Holy Communion. That is the Holy Eucharist. We're healed of of many of our maladies and our spiritual illnesses and given strength through the reception of Holy Communion when we truly do more than just touch our Lord's garments. We are completely united with God Himself. But here's how the Gospel is interpreted for this day of Lent today. It says that the apostles are out on their ship, out on the water, and there are advent, adverse winds, and, and it's rocking the boat back and forth and keeping them from safely continuing their journey. It says that our Lord, well, he's back on the shore all by himself, waiting. And then it says at the fourth watch of the night, That's about morning time. He comes walking on the water. Despite all the winds and the waves and everything else, he walks out to them. He gets on their boat. And then he he calms everything down. Well, the interpretation of this gospel is this, that we are like the apostles. We're going through this Lent, We're trying to fight against all those adverse winds, our passions, our evil inclinations, our sins, and everything else. And fallen human nature being what it is, is having a hard time of it. We're always going against the wind, into the wind, and it's it's knocking us back. But we need our strength, some supernatural strength, to overcome our evil inclinations and uh, everything else. Then, the fourth watch of the night, morning time. Hmm. It's about 8.14 right now. Maybe it's a little past the fourth watch of the night. But our Lord soon is going to enter onto the boat of your soul in Holy Communion. He's going to give you all of that strength and all of the nourishment that you need to fight against, to keep pushing this whole Lenten season, to keep pushing against all the adversity that will come your way. Because we'll be tempted often throughout this Lenten season to give up on our Lenten penances, to slacken on them. We need the graces that are given to us in Holy Communion, sacramental graces that will come. And today... How should we then think about receiving our Lord? Well, never go out of routine or habit, but always remember to have a seriously good resolution to keep going forward in the spiritual life. St. Dominic Savio, today's saint, is one of the patrons for First Holy Communicants, and he shows us the way to receive Holy Communion well. You know, he was only seven years old when he received his first Holy Communion. Today, that's a normal. But back when he was alive, you wouldn't receive until you were about 12 years old. He was so learned in the Catechism and had such a desire for holiness and for Holy Communion that his priest allowed him to receive early. And when he received, he made four very firm resolutions. The first was that he would go to confession and communion as often as his confessor would would allow him, 
The second was that he would keep Sundays and holy days holy. And then he made other resolutions that Jesus and Mary would be his friend. And I believe the fourth was to avoid the the occasions of sin and all of the rest. But you see, he had these firm resolutions worked out in his mind. When you go to communion, when we go to communion, we should have certain resolutions, some prayers that we want to to say to our Lord to help us just make it through the day, to keep our Lenten fast, to avoid idle conversation. This is a something that came up in today's with today's Saint Saint Francis of Rome, sort of a noto bene to today's sermon. She had the visible presence of her guardian angel because she was so virtuous. God allowed that to happen, and she could speak to the guardian angel whenever she wanted. But whenever she sinned, they say that the guardian angel would go away from her for a time. But on one occasion, and I only learned this today, she was in the company of others that were having some idle conversation. Not, it must have been somewhat, not horrible conversation, but somewhat bad in some way, in any case. And instead of saying anything, she just listened, remained silent. And her guardian angel was there and a witness to all of it and gave her a nice, hard slap on the face so that all the present actually heard the slap. And she learned her lesson. From then on, she would speak up. If some other people were saying things that they shouldn't, be gossiping or whatever, she would speak up or leave. And that's how we should be. How, watch over your conversation today. Maybe that's your resolution for Holy Communion today. Give me strength to use the tongue on which we receive our blessed Lord. Use it to bless God, not to sin. So, in other words, today, let us think of our Lord coming into the, the ship of our soul, giving us that strength we need to avoid sin this Lent, to practice virtue, and to be faithful to our Lenten practices all 40 days of this Holy Lenten season. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.